It's not uncommon for me to get a call from someone visiting a plant with a tricky application. The hoses keep failing. I think it has something to do with vibration, they say. When they ask me how to fix the problem, I answer with the truth. I don't know. This is because vibration is mysterious. What we know about our hose is based on testing. We pressurize hoses until they burst. We cycle them until they leak or deform. But we do these tests in controlled ways in the plant with linear pressure increases with the hose in a defined geometry. Flex hoses are used because of movements in the fluid transfer system. We don't want these strains in the hard piping to cause stress in the structure or the welded connections. A braided metal hose can change shape as needed to accommodate both slow movements from thermal expansion or repeated mechanical movements from, say, a press moving up and down. But what about when these movements are not so slow? What if they're not clearly up, down, or left and right, like vibration? Vibration is repeated movement defined by both magnitude, how far up or down, along with frequency, how fast the cycle of up and down happens before it repeats. It could be something like when a pump starts up and it rumbles really loud and shakes around a little until it settles down, then it hums. We know vibration is happening, we observe it in the plant, but even if we were able to put numbers to it, where would we look to see which hose can take what amount? Nowhere. We could never test every hose in every situation with every possible pressure. So what can we do? We investigate how and why the installed hose is failing. Let's break it down into steps. First, Find the leak and mark it. Second, remove the braid carefully. Try not to cut through the welds or damage the hose underneath because you'll need to look for clues later. Zoom in, magnify. I like to use an eye loop with the light. Sometimes I see cracks in the hose. Sometimes I see a hole in the hose. Sometimes I see pitting corrosion from the inside. Sometimes I see scrapes or damage from something rubbing on the outside of the hose or distortion of the braid that looks like it was twisted. When there are braid marks, I suspect that there is vibration or at least relative movement of the braid against the crest of the corrugation, which makes the wire act like a tiny saw cutting into the hose. This shows up especially when the pressure is high because the braid is pulled tight while the pressure inside the hose pushes back against it. One idea for addressing this vibration problem is to add a wear layer of bronze braid in between the hose and the stainless braid. The bronze is softer than either the stainless braid or hose. It wears away first without harming the assembly's structural integrity. Another option for helping a hose with braid wear last longer is simply to use a hose which has a thicker wall. When there are circumferential cracks, I first think of either bending or torsional stress. I look for permanent bends in the hose near the crack. This would be evidence of overbending to a radius smaller than the minimum recommended. I also check if there's any out of plane movement which could cause torsion. I look for wrench marks on the fitting or the ferrule which could indicate twisting. If there is a circumferential crack, which exists without any other cause, we suspect vibration alone as the cause, especially if the application is known for high vibration. We check to see if the velocity is high since this could induce or increase vibrations. If the system vibration is being transferred onto the hose and that can't be changed, then we have to change the hose. Would it be better if it were heavier Lighter, stiffer, or more flexible? I don't know. We have to go back to fourth grade science class and use the scientific method. That sounds so much better than just saying trial and error. If you don't know which direction to go, consider trying two different hoses. 
one on either end of the flexible versus stiff spectrum, a compressed P3 hose for the most flexible extreme, and an 800 series open pitch hose for the stiff heavy extreme. Monitor them carefully after installation to see how long they last. Your present hose also may be hitting its resonant natural frequency, which causes it to stress itself to death. Changing the mass or the stiffness could change it enough so the application's vibration does not affect the new hose in the same negative way. Hopefully, one of the prototypes will perform clearly better than the other and lead you in the right direction. There's no doubt that vibration is a challenge. But with plenty of PEMFLEX hose series to choose from, you're more likely to find one which can improve the life of the hose in even the toughest applications. Bye for now. See you again soon.